Welcome back garden friends. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to grow brassicas like a boss. As you can see, uh, it's been a great year out in the garden behind me. This is all grown organically here at the school garden uh, with me and my students. I'm so happy and thankful to have them here learning about this. But we have some purple uh, cauliflower, we've got white cauliflower, the cheddar cauliflower, and of course just a ton of broccoli. And actually to grow all this wasn't that hard. So sit back, sit back relax, and enjoy because it's time to learn. Welcome to the garden. Today we're going to talk about how to grow monster brassicas in your garden. What are brassicas, you may ask? Uh, all your broccoli, those are your cold crops. Your broccoli, your cauliflower, your cabbage, um, everything else in between. I guess we got uh, Brussels sprouts. In this garden right now we grew many different types of broccoli, a couple different types of cabbage, three types of cauliflower. So we, we uh, lot to uh, lot to look at, but really what the secret to growing some monster brassicas is, is a few things. So one thing you want really rich, uh, loose, well-drained soil. We've been adding a ton of organic matter and compost over the years, to, uh, each season to this garden. It's been building up and up and up each season. And so you can see the plants are nice and healthy. Hopefully you can see those behind me. I'm not the best camera person. So uh, great soil. And if you don't have great soil, you can go in larger containers or you need to go in raised beds or you, if you're going to go in ground, then it's time to work on that soil and build it up. Like I said, some organic matter, some soil amendments. Um, you can get a soil test uh, to figure out how good or bad your soil is, maybe what it's, what it's missing or lacking. That can be helpful, but it's really up to you about how far you want to go. But honestly, most soil can um, typically can benefit from some organic matter, some compost, some soil amendment. So we, we add all that, we make our own uh, here as well, and we got some donated, which was fantastic. So build up that soil first thing. Of course, it's, you gotta plant them at the right time of year. Uh, these are all cool season crops here in California. So we kind of started them at the um, kind of middle of fall, and now we're heading into winter, and they're still doing pretty good. And actually, you can, if you wanna plant some more seedlings of these, you actually still can, the weather's just nice. We've had these really nice, cool, chilly, chilly nights. But we've also had some um, really nice, kind of warm, sunny days where you get lots of sunshine. It's into the 60s. And so they're growing like crazy. You can probably hear the irrigation on in the background. That's actually another secret, too, is sometimes we think we're growing a winter crop that you just it's, it's going to be wet. It's winter time. So we don't really need to uh, do a whole lot to um, irrigate. But honestly, I, 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 in between each storm, if it's raining, obviously I'm not going to uh, water the plants or irrigate them. But, you know, when things get a little bit crazy, hope, hopefully I didn't pause it right there. So when things get a little bit crazy, it's, it's you know, advisable, uh, or not by crazy, I mean, when things get a little bit dry, when it gets a little too dry, uh, it's advisable to get in there and do a little yeah, hand watering if needed. I have a drip system in here, so I cranked it on. Now they're getting drip, 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 getting some water out there, and so it's doing really nice. So make sure you're watering properly, keeping them evenly moist. Good soil, and then, and then put your garden, even though it's a winter garden, and you think, oh, they, these are cool season plants, maybe they like it shady. No, they want full, full blasting sun. If you're growing these in an area where they're gonna get some shade, you're probably gonna see smaller crowns, leggier growth, a little more spindly growth. So and out here, you can see it's middle of the day, they're getting blasted with sunshine, lots of sun. We've been doing a lot of harvesting out here, as you can probably see from the, the pictures, uh, the thumbnail maybe, hopefully. Um, so we've been harvesting a ton, really big plants. And so it's the soil, it's the full sun, it's the proper watering. We've, we've been keeping the pests off them with organic methods, uh, which really is, hasn't been that bad for us. Uh, it was really just kind of early on when the plants were young that I really put a little effort into keeping the slugs and snails and some of those, those caterpillars off them. Now they've been growing so well and I really haven't, uh, I've been spending a lot of time in the garden and since I haven't noticed any damage, any aphids or any, any leaves been nibbled on, I know that we're doing really good, so we've been taking care of those pests uh, with organic methods and just a lot of upkeep, keeping you know any weeds that we see sprouting, those get ripped out immediately, and so definitely you don't want those competing with your plants. Um, those are that's that's really helpful. We fertilize pretty reg regularly with organic fertilizer, but like I said, for us it's all about building up that soil. If your soil is really rich and full of life and nutrition and fertility, the soil will end up feeding your plants properly, and they're they're loving it right now. Um, so for us, those are the main things, is getting, getting them off to a good start, planting them at the right time of year, um, full sun, good soil, good nutrition, uh, or, organic pest control is always good. We, you know, neem oil, sluggo, those are some of the things that we used early on to keep the plants extra healthy. Uh, like I said, and then a little bit of organic fertilizer um, ne never hurts uh, <laughs> to go in there as well. For, um, for us, it's just and, uh, another big thing too is just proper spacing. Right, so sometimes as gardeners, we, we, we think it might, might be better to uh, get way more plants in the ground than maybe is necessary because we think maybe more, you know, more is better. Uh, but sometimes if you plant your plants, 
a ton of them in the same spot, you're going to notice they're going to be competing with each other, and then um, you're going to end up having you know smaller crowns and, and end up having less growth if you try to get you know hyper dense with your plantings. So for us, with a lot of uh, the broccoli and cauliflower, you know we gave them like a you know 18 inch spacing. Uh, these rows behind me, you can see I just planted some taters right here. We uh, we, we had harvested a bunch of our brassicas. Now the taters are going in. I got them getting the water going, but with them. Um, spacing is everything so some plants can be you know six inches apart ten inches apart whatever so re really do your research on whatever plant you're growing uh, so that way you space the plants at the right spacing and even your rows at the right spacing and that that spacing might change if you're in, like if with us we're going in ground and i kind of like to have um a little uh, nice rows behind me so that way the students can kind of get in there and get their work done and and you can each row is def, uh, kind of defined and it's easy to access the plants on either side some folks might be going raised bed and so the spacing on that sometimes you can cluster your rows a little bit tighter because you're able to can reach in from either side to get that work um, but but honestly do your research uh, for whatever the plant may be and proper spacing is very helpful but that's you know that's really it for now uh, as far as uh, the tips and tricks really just feed the plant feed that soil get them good sun plant them at the proper time of the year proper spacing keep those bugs off them and, and you, you do that with uh, just you know observation day-to-day -day observation get out there the best thing you can do is get some footsteps in your garden and then uh, get some time out there get your favorite beverage of choice maybe uh, maybe a tea or, or a lemonade and get out there and, and kind of put some put some time in because um, I think then your observational skills will take over and you might start noticing things you maybe you didn't notice before but that's really what it's all about you, you can spaced out get them into good soil good Sun proper water proper soil they do all the work it's really fun we've been coming in every day uh, me and the students and my and my coworker and we really had a blast. Like I said, this row, this plant, uh, this garden right here got planted in maybe middle of October. It's now end of January. A lot of it's getting harvested. Some of it's still coming. We got a ton, a uh, ton more to go. And then as some of them are getting pulled out, we're just planting more as we go and adding compost, of course, as we go. And so for us, it's been fantastic. Um, I want to thank you for being here. If you're still watching this video, that's awesome that you're here. And I just might say this: this is probably going to be one of my last videos for. Um, for a while uh, I had a student or a staff member I don't know I, um, the camera that's you probably noticed the camera shaking and not very great quality which is a bummer but um, I had I had my the camera that I usually use my GoPro it got stolen this week off my desk um, foolish me um, foolish me foolish me um, my fault really but um, I lost my camera this camera it really isn't sufficient to, to make proper videos for people to enjoy so this will probably be my last video for a while until I can figure something out. The camera was pretty expensive, and um, being a ha you know having a kid and stuff, it's like I I gotta have priorities, so I can't really run out and go buy another camera, which is a bit of a bummer. Um, I I really love doing this channel and making these videos for people to um, to enjoy and to hopefully share in our adventure, maybe learn a little bit or just laugh if you can. Um, but it's been it's been awesome to do this, and may maybe one day I'll if I can get a camera soon or get something figured out, maybe um. Maybe I'll get back at it, but for now, this is probably going to be the last one for quite a while. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I guess like and share, subscribe. It's kind of stupid to say that now that um, it's kind of over, but uh, it is what it is. All right, well, thank you so much for being here, Garden Friends, and best wishes to you all. Happy gardening to everybody out there, and never, ever stop growing. Keep on growing. Keep, keep, keep on growing, friends. Bye.